I'm Kim Geis, Assistant Director for Curatorial Services here at the National World War II Museum. And I'm standing in our vault with a recent collection that is really very interesting. It's from a woman worker. And during the war, everyone knows that women stepped into the gap left by men who were going off into service and also helped fill the tremendous need. It wasn't just people were going into service and women had to step into that role. There was also a greater need. So during the war, lots of women volunteered. At the beginning of the war in 1940, there were about 12 million women in the workforce. And by 1945, there were around 19 million women who were working at the time. Of course, the most famous woman, woman worker became known as Rosie the Riveter. So Rosie the Riveter was a propaganda poster girl, essentially, um, that came to stand for women in the production industry during World War II, American women. Women performed a variety of roles. So riveting was just one of the tasks, one of the many tasks that women performed on a production line. Um, and this collection is actually from a riveter. It's not Rosie, um, Nettie, Nettie the Riveter. So this collection is from Nettie Parker, Jeanette Parker, who went by Nettie. She worked at Fisher Body, um, in Memphis, Tennessee. And Fisher Body was one of the large subsidiaries of the General Motors Corporation. They had around 13 different facilities around the country. And the Fisher Body in Memphis, Tennessee was part of the Fisher Aircraft Division. And that's what you see on Nettie's um, coveralls that we have now in the collection. So this would have been the uniform that she wore while working, while riveting. And at Fisher Body, they produced various parts for aircraft. So they didn't produce entire um, bombers, but they did produce lots and lots of different smaller parts that then went into the bomber. And Nettie was working on those. What she did was called flush riveting and on B-25s. So flush riveting was a technique that was employed to reduce the drag on aircraft, to make them faster. Um, and so essentially the rivet was flush against the surface on the exterior. And so um, there's actually a training film that Walt Disney produced um, for um, riveters on flush riveting and the different kinds of techniques, dimpled flush riveting and pre-dimpling and um, so different kinds of flush riveting. But Nettie was a, a riveter who did perform flush riveting on um, B-25 parts at Fisher in Memphis. And in addition to the uniform that we have in the collection, we also have some other pieces. And we have some of her pay stubs. So we have several collections from women workers um, that include pay stubs or pay documentation. And I think it's really interesting and very important that women workers save this kind of material. We've heard from a couple women workers who said, you know, of course they were very proud of their contributions and proud of contributing in this unique way. Um, in a way that perhaps was not seen as um, feminine or a traditional, traditional way. Um, so Jeanette Parker saved some of her pay stubs from that time, from Fisher Aircraft. And then also one very interesting piece, it's a little booklet, Suggestion Plan for Fisher Body Employees. And this booklet contains information that relates to um, lots of different industries during the war, but Fisher Body Division um, solicited suggestions from their employees as to how to make the, um, the work that they performed more efficient and um, overall, you know, uh, better use of their time. 
So uh, they, were so they were asked to provide suggestions to speed victory. And this is what this, there were suggestion boxes and suggestion forms. You could receive an award from the company if you were able to contribute to, um, to the production ideas. So again, Nettie Parker, um, employee at Fisher Body Aircraft in Memphis, Tennessee.